Welcome to the e-commerce coffee break podcast. In today's episode, we discuss how to drive organic traffic to your online shop. Joining me on the show is Mike Simmons, owner at pluginuseful.com. So let's dive right into it. Hello and welcome to another episode of the e-commerce coffee break podcast. Today, we want to find out how you can drive organic traffic in a AI world. Artificial intelligence is taking over and we want to find out how you can use that to your advantage and bring the best traffic, organic traffic to your store, to your website. With me on the show today is Mike Simmons. He's the owner of pluginuseful.com. Mike had a remarkable journey from software engineer to MBA to successful entrepreneur. And he spent the last decade leading a health tech company from zero to 21 million annual revenue, growing a team to 200 employees worldwide and raising 60 million in venture capital. Now he's channeling that expertise into building a platform designed to empower entrepreneurs on Shopify. So we have a lot to cover. So let's dive right into it. And let's welcome Mike to the show. Hi, Mike. How are you today? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on. Mike, we want to dive into the world of organic traffic. And with that, we also talking about search engine optimization, because that's the key to organic yeah. traffic. Not always easy when you have a Shopify store because it can be quite complex and a lot of people do not have in-depth knowledge, expertise when it comes to search engine optimization. Starting from how has search engine optimization changed since AI came around the corner a year ago, one and a half years ago? I think uh, search engine optimization obviously is a it's, a, it's always been a moving target. Uh, and in a lot of cases, there's... You know, we're dealing with a black box, right? The search engines don't advertise their algorithms. And so we, through a process of trial and error, the industry sort of picks up on what works better than than what not. And um, so there's what that, I think what that yields is a lot of like um, ideas about what works, but not a ton of like hard proof. Obviously recently the, um, a lot of the source code was was leaked and so we got a little bit more in depth and a lot of people said oh i told you that was a thing and then uh, other people were like well this is i've been doing this all my you know all my professional career and it's not a thing so i'm going to stop doing that but i think what ends up happening is that there's like a few really fundamental things that if you focus on you will be able to make a difference and even if the um, even if there's a core update in Google or the algorithm of Bing changes or whatever, there those are like making very generally what I've seen is that those those types of things are making small tweaks on the periphery, and for people who have kind of figured out how to game the system for a while, some of those tweaks can make a big difference in their business. But if you just focus really on the fundamental, which in my in in the case of our customers, that's all people have time for. Um, you can make a big difference, and uh, like it's and it's uh, it's really encouraging for me. For me, what we see is like around twenty percent of our customers um, will see like over ten x growth in their uh, organic traffic within six months of installing our app. And the reason I think it's not higher is because, you know, we, we do ask people to do some work and not everybody does some work, but if you follow the recommendations, uh, you can make a big increase in uh, the organic traffic that your, that your site gets. And even if you're starting from zero, we have case study after case study that we're, um, that shows that you can go from kind of zero to thousands of organic uh, visits per month. And, um, if you follow the steps. So yeah, it's pretty exciting. Mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit of what organic traffic actually is going to. So if you have a store, you probably have your product detail pages and you have a mind yeah. to optimize these. You might or might not have a blog with content there. So what's the strategy to um, create pages, websites that attract the right traffic? The really nice thing about uh, SEO for e-commerce companies, which is our audience here today, is like, you don't have to think of like, there are, there are literally thousands of like thousands and thousands of blog posts about how to, or uh, how to optimize a website. 
And a lot of those things are like not related to selling products. They're related to getting content to, you know, just, you know, getting clicks and eyeballs and whatever. Uh, and there's different strategies for different types of things. I think for e-commerce our we've, we've, what we've tried to do in our app is to like really slim that down to like, what is going to make a difference for selling stuff online? Because obviously that's the whole point. Right? So, um, so I think there's like, uh, maybe, yeah, a few things that we could talk about. Um, I think your big, the, the big, uh, pages are your categories page. So let's just say in, in Shopify, they definitely call that categories and other platforms. It might be, uh, known as, you know, catalogs or something like that. Like it's just a listing of products that are grouped together with some kind of theme. Let's just say that as generic as possible. Uh, and then it's your product page and then it's kind of ancillary content. So what are, and that's going to be like blogs or about us or things like that, right? Frequently asked questions maybe falls into that category. So I think that, and this is kind of, uh, whether you're using our app or not, like plugin, uh, plugin SEO for Shopify uh, listeners or listeners in your audience that use Shopify, plugin SEO is going to make a lot of this stuff easier for you. But even if you're just kind of thinking about this uh, on it, you know, maybe on a different platform or thinking about this a little bit more generically, what you can think about is like let's let's start with the let's start with the product the cat categories page. So these these groups of products with a certain, um, with a certain theme. Um, so the first thing that we see off very often is like these pages are designed by people who are looking at this stuff every day and they know, let's just take an example of like a flower shop trying to, um, you know, get people to buy online. So this flower shop owner is talking about flowers all day long. All they think about is flowers. And so when they go to create their categories, they just think about anniversaries, birthdays, sympathy, right? And these like one word descriptions that make sense to for this group of products. But they, they are way too generic for a good SEO page title, right? So what you want to, what you really want to do is to Think about the keywords that are important to you. Like in this case, it might be like flower bouquets for anniversaries. That's what people are actually, something like that is what people are actually searching for that could have a chance of getting relevant search traffic to your site. Anniversary is just way too generic. Like you're going to get uh, presents and what's good for the first anniversary and the 10th anniversary, you're like all this other stuff that's in this, in this noise. So that, that, that title is not doing any good for SEO. So I think that's kind of like one really easy takeaway is like make sure that your title has, you're, you're thinking about keywords and search terms as you're, as you're creating the title of those category pages. Mm -hmm. And then it's probably obvious, but just make sure like your slug, so the, the part of the URL that uh, is, comes after the slash categories, matches the same thing. So if it's just going to be like, um, you know, that's, that should just be, uh, this always try to be the same. So that's, that's the, the first thing. The second thing is, uh, on that page, talk about the products a little bit. Most of the time we see category pages with no informational text at all. It's just a list of products, but this is a missed opportunity. You could still rank for that. I see a lot of well-ranked products that are just kind of generic pages. But if you want to uh, rank above that and you have a relatively low domain authority, add some content to that page. So like 500 words roughly that have some testimonials from your customers that talk a little bit about um, the, in this case, let's just use this flower uh, example again, like who are the growers? What are these flowers generally used? What's this kind of category used to communicate? Or, you know, what do they, what does this flower signify? Things like that uh, could be a really good way and, and use, you know, use your H2 heading so that the, the, it's easy to read for the user, but also easy to read for the, uh, for the robots that are scanning your site. And, um, just 
you know, not, it doesn't need to be, you don't need to go crazy. It doesn't need to be 1500 word blog post on every category page, right. but explain to your users and your, your visitors, what's going on here. What should they be thinking about when they're picking uh, uh, the, the appropriate flower for the occasion and help them to understand uh, that. And what, what, uh, and that just helps you to um, to show your expertise in this field, which is really what um, Google is trying to reward you for, right? And that's that's sort of the idea. So I think that's like on the category page, like do those couple of things, and you're going to have much better results. Um, on the product pages, I, I would say like uh, some of the same stuff is true. Keywords mm -hmm. in your products, we've I've seen like where people just use like the SKU, like the the, the code <laughs> number for uh, for the product title. I think it, it might work if you're th if you're selling bicycle parts or car parts and you need like this very specific uh, number in there. But most of the time, what we would expect is something that is for most products. You would expect something that is uses these primary keywords like flower bouquet and then describes it in some creative way. But even if, you know, uh, we see this a lot on jewelry sites, for, for example, where the, the artist is super creative and they want to name the piece as something beautiful and creative, but nobody's searching for that creative idea. What they're searching for is an earring or a necklace. And if you don't put that in your, um, in your keyword, or sorry, if you don't put that keyword in your title, you're not going to connect the dots to what people are searching for. And that's really the key. So same idea, put your keywords in your titles, have the slug match it, and then develop, spend a little more time developing content on those pages. I think you just gave very valuable tips away there. Now, I think mm -hmm. the biggest problem that somebody who comes new to the topic of F SEO is you don't know what you don't know. So, and I know that you provide with plugin SEO a, also a audit feature. So basically yeah, yeah. the tool tells you what you need to work on. Just talk me through it. How does that work? Yeah. So we've um, we've kind of listed out uh, and, and we we actually recently redid this um, after the the all the source code was leaked, we kind of took that into account and said like what are these checks really matter and, and what and and what matters more and less. And basically we look at probably you know 30 to 60 elements of a page, depending on the type of page that we're looking at. And we are kind of interrogating that page about these types of things. Are there keywords? If there are, how many are, are there? Are they keywords in different parts of the page? Do these different parts of the page that are important exist? And things like that. So we are looking at uh, very specific elements of every single page um, and giving you kind of a pass warning or critical grade. So, and then try to prioritize that for our users. So look, if you just have an hour uh, to work on this part of your business this week, what is the first thing that you should focus on? Well, we have like an action item. We give our user an action item list for their, for their pages that says like, do these things first, right? Because yeah, if we think about like who's who's using our app and trying to learn this stuff, what you see is like it's these wonderful entrepreneurs who are trying to figure out how to manufacture their products and get them to you know import them and and store and warehouse them and then you know pay shipping tax on it or whatever. And all of those things are the responsibility of the of the entrepreneur even before they make their first sale. And there's so much to focus on when it comes to SEO. We want to make it as easy as possible for them. And uh, that's that's what the yeah the app is really uh, designed towards. Okay, you mentioned before that you see amazing results once people have implemented everything that you tell them to do. So now give me an example of, uh, you don't need to name the brand of a client that, um, how long does it take them from scratch to get up and running and to optimize their store? Yeah, great. Um, so it, like some of this stuff depends on how many pages the store has um, because there's probably work to do on every page. So if you have, you know, 100 products versus 3,000 products, obviously that's, that's going to take you uh, a bit of time. 
but what, what's really nice, uh, what's really uh, interesting is I think like getting set up probably is you know twenty or thirty minutes of work within the app, and that will get you to the point where you've got some, uh, you've kind of thought a little bit about the keywords that you want to optimize your your content for, and you've done uh, you've connected uh, some external sources like Google Search Console, and your uh, you've kicked off. The scan now the scan is going to run for a bit and you, that's uh and and then you know what that's gonna what, once that's finished when you come back in to the app it's going to have this prioritized list of things to work on uh for you and that can take you know i think the idea here is like there's no there's no uh it doesn't these pages don't have to be perfect like even if we rank the score at like, or we rank a page at like, you know, fifty points out of a hundred, the 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 objective isn't necessarily getting to a hundred. But you should think about like, really the the thing that you should think about on every page is is it the best page that um, that I could make for a customer searching for X Y Z. Right, and that's that's really the the idea. So it doesn't have to be like you don't have to get every page to 100 to see good results. Right. But you know, if you can get into the 70s and 80s, even that's really good. You know, so I think it it should. You know, the initial setup is like 20 minutes uh, to half hour, and then going through the checklist of uh, the things for your page is going to take a little bit of time. Uh, but we also give tools to to do that so that you can like you can make changes in our app that will apply across every single page on your Shopify store. And that's a, that's a huge time saver. And then, you know, the there's some things that you have to do individually, product by product or category by category. But there's really you can make a lot of progress probably in a in you know two or three hours of, of focus work. Okay. Give me a bit of an idea. You mentioned before it takes some time. Um, I think you mentioned six months or something to see really results. And people might be under the impression that I've changed my page and tomorrow I will be number one on Google, uh, which mm. usually does not, not happen. Exceptions to yeah, the rule might apply, but usually it doesn't. Um, yeah. what, what's, your, what's your experience um, SAO being a marathon on um, the timeline when people see really coming um, organic traffic coming in? Yeah. Yeah, I think we see that this is very achievable in a few months, and um, and what we what we also see is like over a longer period of time, you can compound this effort, and so you know you can go from zero to five hundred clicks in six months, but you could also go from five hundred clicks to six thousand clicks over the next. 12 months after that, you know? And so it's like, you ought to always keep, you want to keep working on the things to make them uh, better and better. I, I kind of think about this, like investing. Uh, it's like, there are, you know, if you think about like day traders versus long-term value investors, the there's ways to make money in the stock market today. And that is not what long-term investors think about. It's kind of, and but instead they think, they think about like, long-term uh long-term growth of businesses and stuff like this in in, in seo or in, in in traffic world as we're investing in like what are we going to do to get customers to our site it's there's also these the same kind of long-term game and short-term game that we can think about so your your short-term game is adwords like if you mm -hmm. spend enough money on meta and google and being as if for advertising like you will get traffic to your site we can design a good campaign that will bring us traffic. Uh, but you're spending that money today. It's a purchase, right? You might get uh, you might get uh, some customers from it. Uh, hopefully you do. And so you get something for your purchase, but it's a purchase. With, um, with SEO and investing in all of these small fixes over time for organic traffic, it's going to have a lot, much more long-term effect but over that over that time, the time that you the effort that you put in, the time that you put in, and the you know it's usually less expensive. Uh, but 
uh, but it, but you pay for it in maybe time versus money. Right. But like in in uh, in that uh, your 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 results compound, and it so it takes longer, but the value ultimately is I think usually going to be greater, at least equal to spending a lot of money on uh, on ads. So maybe a strategy for for an e-commerce brand is some mix of both. But I don't think mm -hmm. you should ever say like we don't do seo at all we don't need it we just like because that long-term strategy ultimately you're going to want to have people who visit your site and buy things that you didn't actually explicitly pay for them to come in through advertising like you don't want to be kind of addicted to that advertising um stream only and uh so you know you're you've got to be doing something on the SEO side to find, to ultimately have a re, uh, this reward. And yeah, so, that makes absolutely, makes absolutely yeah. sense. And I think another thing is also that organic traffic usually is better quality traffic. The conversion rates from organic traffic are usually higher than from paid traffic because with paid traffic, you're sort of in the hands of Meta or Google. And if the algorithm has a hiccup, which happens frequently, um, you might just get traffic that you pay for and it's the quality is just not good. So you have a lot of yeah. uh, loss on that side. Now, now tell me, um, Plugin SEO has thousands of positive reviews there. So you have thousands of clients, um, but who's your perfect customer? Who should start with Plugin SEO? So, and, so first of all, our app is like very specific to Shopify. Uh, it's deeply integrated in Shopify. So it doesn't, you know, it's not for every single um, e-commerce platform. So our, the first kind of uh, perfect customer trait is Shopify user. Uh, the second thing is that we have, you know, really good tools for uh, brands of every size. So if you've got a half a dozen products all the way up to thousands of products, our app will, uh, will work just as well across that whole spectrum. So and then I think what we also pride ourselves in is like taking good care of customers who really don't know anything about SEO and it's, they're very new. So we have a toolkit that's powerful enough for somebody who's really familiar with SEO to like leverage and make a bunch of progress for, for those brands. But we also really take care, we, we are aiming to take care of the people who, are, you know, that busy entrepreneur who's got a thousand things on their plate and maybe a couple of hours to spend on marketing this week. And we want to give them some high value actions to take for that limited amount of time. So really, um, really the, the, uh, the perfect customer is somebody who it's more about motive, right? Somebody who wants to improve and sees the value in improving their, their search engine uh, optimization. And from there, you know, we can take care of you no matter if you're, just getting started or if you're an expert if you have a small store or if you have a large store uh, we've pretty much got you covered okay no that sounds good is there any kind of homework that a merchant needs to do before they can get started no no we we kind of walk you through it right right off the bat and i mean we started this conversation talking a little bit about ai and, and integration there and you know for, let's say for example like um you could do some keyword research before coming to our to our app and um, and instead of using our tools to like help you come up with ideas for for keywords, uh, you could kind of do that externally with ChatGPT or whatever your favorite SEO you know keyword research tools are. But we we kind of have good functionality from like having done nothing before you know to having like expert level research done in advance. But we don't certainly require that uh, at all. We'll walk you through it. Okay. Oh, perfect. Tell me a little bit about the pricing structure. How does that work? Today we have three tiers of uh, of pricing. So the, the lowest tier is for small shops. It's like thirty bucks a month. The medium shop is up to two thousand products and ca category pages. So that's uh, fifty bucks a month, and then unlimited is uh, eighty bucks a month. And mm -hmm. so it's, it, you know, it's very, it's a very low cost um, solution there. And then if, if, if a customer really wants some expert help in implementing this, so we'll, you know, doing some specialized keyword research and uh, doing a lot of the fixing for them, 
we offer a one-time service to get them started. It's also priced very That's low uh, at 500 bucks uh, for one time thing to just get you out of the, out of the gate. And we'll make some, we'll, we'll do custom keyword research. We'll do a lot of the fixing and then really make some specific recommendations about, you know, product naming and, and a lot of things that like, I don't necessarily want to go in and change your product names. So I'll just make those as recommendations and but try to educate people on the importance of uh those types of things that like i was explaining earlier it's a do-it-yourself mostly mostly our customer base is do-it-yourself kind of people but if people want some help we we have i mean i think we break even on that service it's not like we're making a, a bunch of money but it really helps our customers and so for us that's that's important you know we want to see more customers seeing this like 10x plus uh, increase in their organic traffic. And every time we get one of those, we, you know, that's how we ring the bell here. We like, that's what we celebrate. <laughs> yeah, no, I like, I like the approach of having sort of a white glove service that it helps you to get started. And I think that's a good investment specifically if you don't have any background in SEO, it can be just very, very overwhelming and very technical. And yeah, if you have somebody basically showing you and, and, talking you through the process on how it works um, that definitely makes the starting process much much smoother and I, I i think the results will just show much quicker over time where can people find out more about you guys our website is pluginuseful.com and if you're in the shopify app store you can search for plugin seo uh, that's the easiest way to get uh, to find us Cool. Okay. Before we come to the end of the coffee break today, is there one final thought that you want to leave our listeners with? There are literally hundreds of different things that you can focus on when it comes to SEO, you know, and, and people will sell expensive services to get backlinks and to, there's so many different aspects of, of SEO that you could spend money on. The thing that I would encourage people to do is like really focus on the fundamentals. And even as you, you, you're you going to read about and hear about everything that's changing, the core updates, the AI, the this, the that, if you have well-structured uh, pages with good, helpful content and it's easy for, it's the pages are laid out uh, well for your customers, you're going to have a good result. Uh, if you just pay a little bit of attention to these things that I'm talking about, like keywords and content style and things like that um and don't get, don't get don't overwhelm yourself by trying to chase all of these like there are seo opportunities all over the place but don't do chase everything just focus on the fundamentals and you're going to have uh you're going to see some traction in your in your business and you know hopefully you'll find some tools like ours that will uh help you accelerate that process a little bit and stay focused but yeah, it, it's easy, easy to get overwhelmed in the world of SEO. And so just like take a step back, focus on the fundamentals and, um, you know, don't, don't go crazy and you'll, you'll have a better time. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I think the fundamentals are, and, and I think Google will love you for what you just said. Um, they will not go away. Once you have the fundamentals right, Google will be 80% happy of what you do and everything else yeah. that happens and changes leave that to the experts um, and focus on the core basics perfect i will put the links in the show notes so then you will be just one click away i hope a lot of people will try out your um your app and um, hopefully see the results very very quickly and mike that was a master class on how to optimize your shopify store on seo and thanks so much for that you're welcome really really great to uh, meet you finally and uh be have a chance to be a guest on your podcast thanks so much thanks so much.